Mr. Ning, what a pleasure to see you. It's a beautiful day today. Yeah, thank you. Yes, I good. hope it's also a fruitful day. Mm -hmm. Talking about the APEC Economic Leaders Meeting week, many are expecting this bilateral between Chinese and the U.S. President. Now, you've been having APEC meetings with your colleagues coming from Asia Pacific. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about what is the expectations of the business community. The business community are expecting uh, a high level achievement and uh, they, they want to see uh, a real uh, cooperation start between the two countries. Uh, they want to see business as usual. They want to go back to this uh, normal trading and uh, investment uh, business relationship. So, but in the meantime, I think they are realistic. They know this is not going to be resolved uh, immediately. So uh, they, they see there's going to be a starting discussion and uh, back, back on to track to, in a normal way. And the business can follow, can still, uh, let's say, uh, implement and uh, conduct their own business in different countries. Usually the APAC members would meet the political leaders uh, during the APEC uh, CEO summit and yeah. also throughout the week of the APEC economic leaders meeting. What are some of the suggestions related to possibly this bilateral meeting that you and your colleagues are likely to provide to the political leaders? You know, all these companies, all these business, uh, they actually, they, they want to see business normal as usual. Uh, they want to see the old days, you know, the two-side cooperation, uh, integration of the economy, and uh, they want to see a few layer of things. They want to see trade become uh, open and normal. There will be less uh, registration, restriction, less uh, sanction, and, uh, and it's a normal policy on trade. Mm. And also on um, technology, investment, finance, everything. So uh, we used to have a, quite a, a cooperative policy in the past, and uh, there's an interruption. Now we want to back, go back to normal mm. to see there's a further cooperation and a further uh, working together sort of environment uh, that the business can grow in this region. You know, Asia Pacific region representing more than 60% of the global economy. And uh, also, this is a region uh, growing the fastest uh, globally. So there are more sort of innovation uh, and uh, of, of technology and uh, market uh, size and the population growth, everything. This is the region lead of the global growth. So as a business, I think they have to focus on this re in this region and then to try to make a, a, a progress and uh, try to grow their business. So compared to other areas, this is, uh, this is the center of the, of the, of the power mm -hmm. and, uh, to drive the growth. Mm. How do people, especially your peers, look at the Chinese business? We understand the IMF recently had just uh, uh, tilted up the expectations for Chinese economic growth uh, to about uh, more than 5%, 5.3%. To 5.4. So, how do you and your peers are looking at the prospect? Oh, of they, 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 they think it's, it's the hope, it's the center, and it's the engine. Despite of the fact that the China's economic growth has oh, been yeah. slowed down I mean, everybody, somewhat. Everybody is betting China's economy go back to track and no more growth, uh, not, not as, as fast as before, but it's still a, a driving uh, engine uh, of, of this, in this region. So. Um, uh, I think a lot of our colleagues in APEC uh, visited China recently after the pandemic and a lot of them find uh, China still China, this is what they told me. Uh, and they <laughs> say uh, uh, things are getting normal, recovering, but they know it's recovering slowly. They, they still say there's less foreigners than before in China, <laughs> and, uh, but uh, foreigners are coming back. Mm. So there's less investment, but investment is coming back but gradually uh, to build confidence and build this uh, business uh, channel uh, as before. But uh, I, I think it's, a, it's a, uh, I think there's a, in business, there are much less 
uh, confrontational mentality. They find opportunities. They find uh, uh, will China grow as before? Or will China provide more kind of uh, investment or trading opportunity for them? Mm. It's something they are looking for very eagerly. Mm. Yeah. When you're saying back on track, yeah. uh, what exactly is the thing that you're trying to describe here? We, we're talking about... Uh, are you talking about like a time frame of one to two years, two to three years, or about five years? Wh you know, what are we, we talking about In here? our discussion, uh, in our proposal to the leaders, so uh, we propose, uh, we want to implement uh, 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 the FTAP, uh, FTAP. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to help to see the WTO uh, functioning properly, and we want to see China still open its door, open its market. We want to see uh, China still welcome foreign investment, and we want to see China, uh, uh, let's say, we have uh, less policy sudden change uh, to surprise them, and uh, they want to see uh, sort of uh, uh, they want to see a longer uh, uh, policy. Uh, in the Chinese market mm -hmm. to enable them to really to make their own plan. So in the meantime, I think they want to see the Western countries, particularly the America, uh, US, they want to see them say uh, uh, less geopolitical things and less uh, registration on investment or less, less uh, kind of uh, intervention on trading or sanction on many other things. So let's say they go back to normal, which means uh, you know, we follow the, uh, the, the, the rules of WTO in the past and all this, all this uh, uh, free trade agreement in the past. Some of the other discussions we see is uh, whether there's going to be consensus, for example, between China and United States about trade. We know there has been certain kinds of sanctions, there are different kinds of uh, restrictions in terms of policy coming from the U.S. side originally. Yeah. So, how do you see this discussion is happening uh, from ABAC's perspective among the policymakers at this moment? You know, the ABAC position is very clear. Even the ABAC members from the US, from any other Western countries, they share the same view. They want to see this is a global market, can be looked at from a, a free trade or economic integration point of view, instead of uh, involving or putting the things into politics or other things to mix them together to make business difficult. So uh, I think it's, uh, 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 from, uh, from, uh, from the APEC point of view, our recommendation, our uh, press release will all say we are organizations supporting uh, uh, globalization, right. supporting free trade, supporting uh, regional, it means uh, APEC areas, uh, economic integration, and uh, we don't want to see any kind of decoupling or any kind of uh, sanction, other things. Fragmentation. Yeah, fragmentation too. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You are the chair of the Sustainable Development yeah. uh, Committee of ABAC. Yeah. There are a lot of global issues whether it's food security, climate change, and some of the others on the list that you are working with your colleagues. Yeah. So let's go through some of these. All right. COP28 coming up. Yeah. We see many as this as a platform to discuss some important topics related to right, COP28. Right, right, right. So what are the current status of discussion right now? It's a, it's a, it's a very uh, intense discussion on sustainability. And uh, the reason for uh, why we spend so much effort and time on this because we are well behind schedule. Mm -hmm. We're behind the schedule of the, you say, COP28. Uh, SDGs. SDG, but now only 15% of the SDG uh, target can be reasonably moved in line with the, with the plan. But all the other things are well, well behind. Mm -hmm. For greenhouse emission, we're supposed to uh, reduce them by 7% last year. But actually, the greenhouse emission last year rise 1.5%. You can see the 
whole thing is getting. I mean, the window is very kind of a, is a, is a, the window time is a, very limited. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we don't have time. So they, we, that's why the AB uh, the 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 ABEC, uh, members uh, recommend to the leaders um, on reduction and uh, reduction adaption mm -hmm. transition everything. They have to. They have to take a, we call them coherent, bold, and the deliberate and the urgent action. I see. To really reach this uh, kind of a temperature uh, rising, this uh, goal, so that you know, uh, the temperature will not rise over uh, two degrees. Yeah. Given some of the latest changes in the world, for example, geopolitics, some countries, including those uh, in Europe, <coughs> going back to coal power plant. Of course, China has also been criticized yeah, yeah. as a result of this. This is one trend that we are seeing. Another trend is new technologies such as green technology, such as uh, electronic cars, right. uh, which can be a great contribution for mm. all of us to achieve the SDGs. Now it's being investigated upon uh, oh, the yeah. technologies of it or the batteries uh, manufacturing related to it has been investigated by some economies uh, with the name of uh, 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 better protection. That is why uh, we say the COP28 uh, must be able to reach a uh, 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 unanimous agreement and to put all the countries, all the efforts together uh, to fight, for, uh, fight against this uh, climate change. China is leading the way today. I mean, China is a solar, uh, well, uh, hydro, uh, um, wind, um, renewable energies, renewable, uh, even 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 uh, even nuclear energy, all leading the way, globally. So China now is the largest uh, sort of a solar energy producer, and uh, also the, uh, one of the largest of uh, hydropower. Uh, and also, it's uh, increase that the, the percent of a uh, percentage of their uh, this, this so renewable or green energy percent now reached by the the global share thirty five percent. Yes, starting from one to two percent in the last ten years. So you can see the efforts made by China. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, I think that all the ABM members, everybody. Uh, all the all the seminar discussions uh, recognize the achievement of, of China in this in this area. But for electric car, again, we have to balance things. I mean, this is somebody somebody want to see a sort of a growth of economy. They want to use more coal coal powered energy to drive their growth econ of economy. Uh, maybe they want to see more employment or or. Or taxation, or other things, other income. But in the meantime, you take care of this, uh, of this uh, 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 sustainability issue. And uh, and uh, I think, it, uh, particularly this uh, electric car things, uh, I think it's purely a trade sort of uh, argument. Uh, I think it's very much uh, they want because China is leading the way. China is going to sell, uh, become the largest car export country, and. Uh, even in this country, in, in the U.S., in Europe, yeah. you see more and more electric car made by the Chinese. It's something they have to accept, but they want to slow it down a little bit because they want to see uh, something happen domestically in their own country. Uh, they can also uh, manufacture uh, this uh, electric car. Now, you have been in the food industry and yeah. related for decades. Right. So tell me about your assessment. How are we coming to consensus, at least to deal with food security issue as a global challenge, particularly for global yeah, south, I think the that, least uh, developed economies? Uh, APEC Business Advisory Council uh, also spent uh, quite a time on food security. A lot of, uh, a lot of uh, study, research, expert ideas being presented in the last few days. So, uh, in general, I think globally, food is enough. Okay, Be the human being can produce enough food to feed themselves. Uh, then what is the problem here? Exactly. I mean, uh, and, and, and uh, even even the arable land 
still limited. Okay, but uh, we we rely on two things. Mm -hmm. One, we rely on technology. Uh, you see, the yield of land uh, in the agri uh, culture uh, products has been rising uh, steadily in the last few decades because of the seeds, nutrition, and uh, crop protection technology. So they 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 almost they almost double the output of, of the of the of the of the of the food production. Mm -hmm. Now I think but uh, in different countries uh, you see different level of uh, productivity. So for food production uh, we suggest we should treat this food production as a sort of a super commodity and to share technology, share all the expertise with my other countries. So, uh, and, and uh, not, not to use food or grain as a weapon mm. to do anything else. That's technology. Second is free trade. Mm -hmm. The waste hemisphere uh, uh, representing, um, I think about 60% about of the agriculture land, mm -hmm. but uh, less than 30% of the population. So the East Hemisphere representing much less land, a much larger population. So you, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's something given by nature. So you have to allow them to trade freely. And uh, uh, we, uh, I think uh, no, no country should use food trading, trading on food, food as, a, as a policy to leverage on these things to achieve other goals. So that's why we, continuously promote uh, food uh, free trade. All right. Frank Ning, as always, what a pleasure, sir. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you.